Today on the market there are three different refrigerator compressors. The most popular old school split phase compressor, BLDC inverter compressor, NLG linear compressor. They all look the same and can be tested the same way, but the results would mean different things for each compressor, which I will cover at the end. To get to the compressor you need to remove the back panel on the bottom and also unplug your fridge from the wall, for your safety. On the side of the compressor you will see a plastic box cover, which can be held by a single screw, a metal wire clamp, or as in my case there are some plastic clips inside the box. And you can release those clips from the top with the screwdriver and then kind of wiggle out the rest of the cover. You will probably struggle a bit, but eventually it will come off. This is how my cover looks like, but yours may be different. Now I need to release PTC start relay, which sits on two pins sticking out from the compressor. So carefully, using a screwdriver, move the start relay away from the compressor until you can take it off completely. These start relays have been used on all refrigerator compressors back then, but now it's being phased out by a newer technology. So if your compressor actually has the start relay but does not work, try replacing the start relay and your compressor may restart once again. But first you need to make sure that your compressor is not shut dead and I'll cover this in the next step. This is how my start relay looks like, but yours may be a bit different. Now I need to loosen up and remove the overload protector, also known as overload switch or overload relay. It sits on a single pin sticking out from the compressor and it's a safety device which prevents your compressor from overheating and causing fire. Sometimes you can hear an overload click if your compressor cannot start and gets too hot. This is how it looks like, but yours, again, may look a little bit different. And now the fun part, the testing of the compressor. Switch your multimeter to ohms of resistance and if you have different ranges, choose the smallest one, 200 in my case. Now place both leads on a short copper pipe sticking out from the compressor and move them around. You should see some numbers jumping on the screen and that means that your multimeter actually works and ready to be used. Keep one of those leads on the same copper pipe and with the second lead touch each one of those three pins sticking out from the compressor individually and you should not see any changes on the screen while testing all those pins. But if you see some numbers jumping on the screen like so while touching one of those three pins that means your compressor is shorted to the ground and must be replaced. Now measure the resistance between any of those two pins and I get 3.6. So get a piece of paper and draw three pins exactly how they are on your compressor. I have two in the top and one in the bottom and I measured 3.6 between the bottom and the right side which means this compressor winding has 3.6 ohms of resistance. Now measure two more pins and I get 2.8. So the left side is 2.8, which means this compressor winding from the top left to the bottom has 2.8 ohms of resistance. And now test the last two pins on the top and I get about 6.4. So once again write it down 6.4 on the top. So what does this mean? Is it good? Is it bad? Well, it depends on which type of compressor you have. If it's the most popular single phase compressor like mine, you add two smaller numbers and the result should be the biggest number. So 2.8 plus 3.6 equals 6.4 and that's exactly what I got on the top. Which means electrically this compressor is in a good shape and typically replacing a start relay would make this compressor run again. So these numbers are great for the old school compressor, but if you have newer BLDC inverter compressor, those numbers would be pretty bad. If you see a gray or a black box right next to the compressor, it's called BLDC inverter compressor. And all three windings on this compressor must be exactly the same. Anywhere from 6 to about 9 ohms of resistance would be a good number. So I put 7.5 as an average. And if you have LG linear compressor, which can be typically found on newer LGs and some Kenmore refrigerator models, 
The only reading you should be getting is an average of 7.5 ohms of resistance and the other two sides should not get any resistance because there is nothing there. So if your compressor does not pass this test, it cannot be fixed, it has to be replaced. But if your compressor checks out good electrically, you would need to continue troubleshooting, which would be way too long for this video. You can also ask questions below and thanks for watching.